standard of care for patients undergoing angioplasty and stenting has seen significant changes over the last few years. We cardiologists as clinicians have been constantly reflecting on the outcome of patients, outcome in terms of death, reblockages of the stents, hospitalization and requirement of a new procedures of angioplasty or stenting or a bypass operation. We think that although the number of these patients requiring these new procedures has come down significantly, they still are unacceptably high. This decrease in the number of patients requiring re-procedures have come down mainly because of development in new technology, especially stent designs, stent technology and red equipments. To further decrease the number of patients requiring procedures for re-blockages of stents or re-narrowing of stents, we have developed now what we call coronary imaging. Imaging means to look the, at the coronary artery from inside before even we put the stents in. This technology is called optical coherence tomography and in particular we have in our hospital a technology called 3D OCT which actually helps us in seeing the coronary artery from inside and what I say seeing is believing. You may argue that you can see by doing coronary angiography but that is exactly the point that doing angiography is not enough to see it. To see it in details especially look at the arteries health from inside and see how much it is blocked, how long it is blocked for and what is the exact dimension where we need to put the stent in. This is done precisely millimeter to millimeter by this new technology called 3D OCT. It's a small catheter or a small tube which goes inside the coronary artery and comes back automatically over few seconds to be precise 1.5 seconds and it gathers all the information from inside including absolutely precise high definition images. These images help us in locating where exactly the blockage is, if the blockage is significant or not and what is the constituents of these blockage. Are these blockages hard like calcium in it or they are soft with fat or lipid plaque inside it and depending on that what kind of technology we are going to use to unblock these blockages. Sometimes we need to use what we call rotablator which is actually a very high spinning device which cuts this blockage if it is hard material and that we can only precisely know by doing this 3D OCT. So once we gather the information which informs us or guides us to use a technology to dilate these blockages and then also guides us to precisely measure what length and what diameter of stent is required. It also guides us that what kind of stent design is needed to completely unblock this blockage and depending on that we can choose from amongst three or four stents which are available. Once we deploy these stents our main aim is to fully expand the stents so that the stent struts are fully opposed to the artery wall. Coronary angiography is a very poor way to really confidently decide if the stent is fully expanded and fully opposed and that's the reason we use this 3D OCT to confirm that. In many instances we are surprised that although coronary angiography shows that the stents have been perfectly placed but after doing 3D OCT it becomes obvious that the stents are not at all fully opposed or fully expanded and we have to use different ways to correct the malapposition or under expansion of the stents. These two things are extremely important for patient's outcome because we want to make sure at the time of the procedure that patients should not be coming back to us due to re-narrowing or re-blockage due to a clot and that can be confidently 
assessed, re-evaluated by doing a 3D OCT. 3D OCT gives us three-dimensional view of the stent which has been deployed. We can also go inside the coronary artery by looking at it through a technology called fly-through mode so that we know from outside and inside how stents have been put in. There have been many studies to find out if this technology has really helped the patients. So the studies incorporated 3D OCT during the procedure and in some patients it did not. And we followed up these patients for one, two, three, four or five years and it was very obvious that patients who underwent angioplasty and stenting with guidance available from 3D OCT did better in terms of number of deaths, re-narrowing, re-blockages, re-admissions and need for re-procedure.